What's up, family? I appreciate y'all being here. Welcome back to another episode of Behind the Business Podcast. This is a podcast where I have creative conversations with my creative friends. Today, I got a very special guest for us. Um, This guy is a husband. He's a father. He's an award-winning corporate trainer, stand-up comedian, content creator, and all-around serial entrepreneur. Most importantly, he's my big brother, and I'm so honored to have him on the show. Please help me welcome Tony Sanders, Jr., Yes, sir. What's up, big bro? Good, man. Happy to be here. So you ready to hop in? Let's do it. I'm ready. All right. First question is, what or who inspires you? What or who inspires me? Um, I find inspiration in everything, literally. I think life is an inspiration. Um, The thing that drives me the most is that I know that I can do something better today than I did yesterday. And that's all I'm looking for. Like that little... 1% 1% better and a little tweak that can unlock everything. So regardless of what I'm doing, whether it's business stuff or creative stuff or family or whatever, I'm like, man, I, I when I wake up in the morning, I got an opportunity to be better. Yeah. Do it a little bit better, tweak it a little bit, learn something new. Um, so that really just progression and being able to get better um, really inspires me and, and motivates me. So I, I just look for inspiration everywhere. That's dope, man. Um, I feel the same way. Creativity can, can literally come from anything or anywhere, any person, any song you hear, or anything like that. So I definitely appreciate that answer. Um, next question. What is the ultimate message that you want to convey with your creativity? Um, I just want people to believe that they can do it. So anytime I'm doing something, people are like, oh, man, I can't believe that you did that. I can't believe that you tried it. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm just like you. You could do that, too, whatever whatever the thing is. Um, if I convey anything, I want uh, to inspire people into action. So even though I'm doing a training, it doesn't matter what the topic is. We could be talking about um, how to have an effective meeting or we can talk about how to uh, have a great business product launch or whatever the case is i want people to understand that like you can do it like when, once we get done talking i want you to be ready to take action yeah. i don't want you to be like man i can't i want you to feel empowered i want you to be like man if he can do that i can do that too and uh, i look at a lot of other people you know that way too when i see i drive by a building and i see a big twenty thousand square foot facility with somebody's last name on it i'm like yo i got a last name too yeah. I could do that too. They are human walking the same earth, mm-hmm. you know, as me. And I and I have them as an example. So now I get a, even a more of a step up. So through my creativity, I just want to show people that whatever you see me doing, just know that you could do that same thing too. Man, that's that's really powerful because I'm a product of that. You know what I'm saying? You've definitely poured into me and um, definitely motivated me just to be more creative. So um, I appreciate that. Yeah, and you're doing it too, and doing it better than me too. Man, that's crazy. That's, none of this <laughs> that's, the, possible. that's what I like. That's yeah. perfect. That that's the way it should go. Yeah. That's the way it should go. I agree. So, next question: What's the biggest sacrifice you feel like you've made for your craft? That's a good question. I was actually asked this question or a similar version of it yesterday, and to me, I didn't really see it as sacrificing. Like I, I'm just doing what I love to do. But if I step back and look at my life and other people's lives or people that I'm around, there are some things that they do that I just don't do. And I guess that's a sacrifice, but it doesn't feel like one because I, I'm, I'm more in love with this thing. I'll give you an example. I don't know what the hottest, latest new TV show is. Mm-hmm. And I don't care. <laughs> you know, I don't I don't always watch every movie or stay up on every trend or whatever um, because I'm working and I love to do that. Now, if I can, there are some things I can keep up with uh, content wise, like that provides inspiration that I like how they did it. And so I may watch a TV show or a YouTube video or whatever, like for inspiration, like, man, they shot something like that. I can do something like that yeah. uh, from from that perspective. And there's some things that I love. But I mean, there, there's probably some things that I miss out on. There's a lot of things that I get invited to that I kind of have a rule. So having a wife and kids, um, if I can't bring my wife or kids to the function, then I probably won't go to the function. Mm -hmm. Not because I can't go anywhere without them, but because I work so much, when I do have free time, I want to spend it with 
the people that I love. And so if somebody in my family or a close friend is not going to be there and it's not business related, I'm probably not going to be there either. And so there's, those are probably some of the things that people will sacrifice. Like, oh, you've never seen uh, Game of Thrones? Like, nope, yeah. not, not a single episode. Man, you never watched, uh, what's, the, what's the one show that everybody likes? It's ending soon. Uh, the main character's name is, uh, it's Damson Idris. So, yeah, I, yeah. I never seen, I don't know. I like, I don't know. Yeah, I couldn't tell you what's going on. Um, so to me, that's small stuff. But like, I'm working while that's on and people are watching that. I'm doing, I'm, I'm creating something, right. you know. And uh, when I'm not creating something, I'm creating memories with my family and the people that I love. So I love that, man. Either way, you're, you're creating, creating memories or, or creating art. I love that. I'm I'm very similar in that way. Like I'm I'm not always up on the latest. I'm tend to consume content that I want to shoot or that I yeah. that I that inspires me. So I listen to a lot of podcasts yeah. and watch a lot of vlogs and watch a lot of documentaries because that's the lane I'm trying to get into. So nice. that that fuels me. That it you know inspires me to go out and create. So yeah. I feel you. If I'm not creating, I'm watching something that I want to create one day or that yeah. I want to, you know what I'm saying, get into that lane. So I definitely feel you there. Um, this is like a this is like a different question, man, that I like to ask people. And um, you do have a music background, which yep. <laughs> a lot of people may or may not know. But uh, what's your theme song, man? You walk in and this song is playing behind you. That's a good question because it changes over time. I already know it changed by the day. So yeah, so and it depends on it depends on what what stage I'm walking on because like if I'm walking on a uh a, a stand-up comedy stage, it may be a little different than if I'm walking on a public speaking stage or if I'm about to go do a training or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um one that I've used before and that I walked out to before is by Big Crit and it's just called Crit here. Mm -hmm. And uh the reason why I like it, getting to the creativity, the beat samples a song that we grew up with. Uh, it actually samples Marvin Winans, mm. and the sample uh, is saying "Trust in God." Mm. And so, you know, the, you hear the sample, and then the drums just drop in, and he's yeah. he come in super hype and just saying that like I've arrived. Mm. And when I go to any place when I'm creating something for a client or for, for a audience or whatever, like I want them to have a dynamic experience. Mm -hmm. And so when I arrive, it's like I'm arriving, like I'm coming hard because I want them to feel the impact of what I'm doing and be able to capture their attention and feel good about it. Again, when people interact with me, I want them to feel empowered. I want them to feel like, man, I could go do something right now. Yeah. And so I love that song. It kind of gets me in a good, headspace of like oh man i'm about to i'm about to tear this stage i'm about to go out here and go crazy and it doesn't matter you know what stage i'm walking on so i would say that one i don't know that song but i'm gonna definitely go check that out definitely. so i ask every guest this so we're gonna have to like eventually make a behind the business playlist or something Absolutely. like this so i'm gonna definitely check that song out yeah. all right piece that you're most proud of a piece like something i created that i'm most proud of yeah anything that you've created that you're most proud of Hmm. You know, that's a that's a tough question to answer m mostly because of like uh a lot of times the most times when I'm creating I'm not uh my satisfaction doesn't come from the piece. Mm. It comes from like whatever happened in the creation process. And so when I'm thinking about like something that I created was I left a, a super secure job to go and do something that wasn't as secure, like something more risky in the business world. And when I left there, that was the job that turned everything around for me in my career. I mean, you know, you watched it firsthand. Yeah. First, the first seven years of my career were the worst seven years I think somebody could go to. I either got fired or laid off from literally every single job. Uh, but I wasn't doing anything that was creative. It wasn't anywhere in my lane. Finally found a job that was in my lane, turned my life around, empowered me, helped me empower the others. But then it came a time that I needed to leave that place. And so I had to create the right mindset that would allow me to go and leave that place with confidence to go conquer other things. And so how I created that mindset 
is like what's exciting for me. I, I, I have this weird thing that when I'm afraid, I, I go chase the fear instead of running away from it. And sometimes I do something that's even crazier than the thing that I was afraid of. So in this case, I was afraid of to, of to leave a job, which is silly thinking about it now, but I was really like kind of fearful about it. And so I jumped out of an airplane. We went to Hawaii and we, yeah. we you know, did that big jump. And that unlocked a lot of stuff for me and helped me to be more fearless in my creation. Because now you come that close to potentially losing your life, the job seems small. It really put things into perspective. I'm like, yo, I ain't, I ain't thinking about this job no more, bro. It, it ain't worse than what I just did. Yeah. And so I, I more so think about it like that. Like the the things that I can create are a direct result of the person that I'm becoming. And so I'm more proud of like those pivotal moments when I became something new so that I can create something better. So what I'm hearing you say is that the process is more... Um what you're proud of than the end result, basically. Absolutely, and it's the part that you have the most control over. Mm, like, yeah. I can control what happens during the creative process. The end result may be there, maybe not. Uh, I grew up in sales, so there's a lot of times where I did everything that I could do right during a sales interaction and still didn't get the sales, still didn't get the result I wanted. Yeah. I've also had times where I did everything wrong during a sales interaction and I still got the sale. Well, sometimes the result may, you know, the results may vary, but the process of like doing the work and creating, um, you're never going to be able to outcreate the person that you are. Mm. So whoever you are, that's the best product you're going to ever be able to put out in the world. If you become better, your output becomes better. It's just a natural result. You can't help but to create a better output if you become a better person. So that's, I more so look at it that way. I love that, man. It's a great answer. All right. Next question. Who would you want to play yourself in the biopic of you? Who would I want to play me? Man, um, the easiest answer is like a Tyrese, because when I was younger, people always used to say, I look like him, but obviously he's older than me. Um, who would I want to play me? I, I would want like a, uh, and this person, this person doesn't look like me, but I feel like they would be able to capture the, uh, the ideas of like what I would want to, and, and they're just one of my favorite actors. I would want like uh, Will Smith or even a Jaden Smith <laughs> who looks nothing like me, but I just feel like they do a good job of uh, capturing the characters that they're portraying. Uh, Childish Gambino, Donald Glover does a good job of that too. And uh, you've seen them in these roles where they have been uh, the underdog and you see their progression throughout like Pursuit of Happiness is one of my favorite movies ever mm -hmm. and the way that Will did and Jaden was in that movie too actually the way they did so um, I don't know I'd, I'd probably pick one of them but a casting director would be like no you got to pick yeah. young like Mike Coulter or somebody you know black and bald head so right. I don't know cool all right uh, last question I got for you man um, how do you want to be remembered I want to be remembered as somebody who trusts in God and you were able to observe that through my actions, how I treated people, the things that I created, the things that I put into the world, the people I empowered. Um, I want people to remember me when I'm gone uh, in a way that still inspires them into action. I want them to look back on my life and be like, wow, he really did X, Y, and Z, and I know he was able to do that because God put it in him to do that, and God put that same thing in me. I want to go do those things. And so um, I don't want people to uh, think about me without having to think about God. Mm -hmm. So I try to put that as my first foot forward. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want people to remember that I, I want the best for people, for all people, even the people that don't want the best for me. I still want the best for them. So that's how I want to be remembered, man. If I if I were to write the script of what people said about me when I'm gone, I would want them to be like, man, that dude loved God. He believed in, in God to the fullest, and he wanted everybody around him to to be successful doing the same thing. That's great, man. Well, I appreciate your time, taking the so, time to, so. to answer these questions, man, and uh, love all your answers, man. And um, like I said at the top, 
that you inspired me, man. Um, I appreciate all the wisdom and everything that you've ever poured into me and all the help, man, that you've, I mean, you probably don't even know some of the stuff that you've helped me with and, and times where I get discouraged or times that I think I can't do it and I just think of you or um, or even call you or, or you call me and um, it's that constant inspiration and, and constant uh, love and, and outpouring that I, I receive from you, man, and I appreciate it. I appreciate that. You're doing great things and you just getting started. Like, wait till you really get going. People ain't gonna be ready, man. You just getting started. Appreciate it, man. All right, uh, this is your camera right here. You can look at them and, and tell the people how they can get in contact with you, your socials and everything you got coming up. But I am everywhere on social media, at Tony R. Sanders. That's TikTok, that's Facebook, that's Twitter, that's LinkedIn. Uh, if you want to email me, you got a question about growing your business, uh, Tony at Gallo.co. And I look forward to hopefully meeting you guys one day. Yes, sir. With that being said, that's another episode of Behind the Business Podcast. I appreciate y'all for being here. We'll see y'all on the next one. Dope. That's good.